Hey guys, James Four Wheel Drive here. So today I want to talk about this 2000 Dodge Ram 1500 Four Wheel Drive. Now, if you follow me on the channel, you know that I basically have fully rebuilt this truck from the inside to outside, grills, whatever, painting. That was like three years ago when I did all that work. But uh, I've had the truck about nine years, and so I was gonna buy a new truck, and then I decided against it, I decided to put the money into the truck and keep it and use it to pull my trailer and pull my sub aside and my Jeep around. So, the problem that I've had with this truck historically is that the suspension has never been great. Um, I spent a bunch of time and money when I was younger just making it big, big tires lifted and looking cool, I guess. And I never really spent any time making it drive drive good or pull good. It's always needed gears. And I never bought the gears because the posse was ruined. So I'd have, literally have to buy the posse, the gears, and all the bearings and everything. And I didn't want to do that because, you know, it was literally like $1,000 for just that, just for the rear. And then it's like another $800 for the front. So I neglected to do that for a long time. I finally blew my transmission up, which preempted me to rebuild it, which I did. I just got done with it, like, literally last night. So, uh, it runs, it drives good, everything's good. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison video of the 355 gears to my 456 gear swap. So we're going to get in the truck, I'm going to go drive down the road. I don't know specifics, I don't know how this is going to play out, but I'm going to take some videos, we're going to go drive it around a little bit. And then I'm going to put the 456 gears in it. And I'm also going to do all the other stuff. And I'm going to record all that. And I'm going to show you the difference between 355 gears on a 35 and 456 gears on a 35. Because online there seems to be a big uh, back and forth on whether or not 410s or 456s. Now I've driven my brother's truck that has 410s in it and it pulls really good but i don't think these big huge tires i don't think 410s are going to do it so what we're going to do like i said is we're going to i'm going to go drive it we're going to put the new gears in it's going to get a new posse it's going to get new gears and then we're going to go drive it again and i'll tell you beforehand i'm getting about 11 miles a gallon so let's hop in the truck and uh i'll show you uh some just like driving and general pull stuff guys i don't know if you can see that i know it's hard to see these tachometer during the daytime but here we go so like i said um let me move let me move my dash this truck has never been a peach just saying um now the suspension needs to be addressed really bad uh, there is no dampening whatsoever. The shocks are completely gone. So we're just going to go piss off my neighbors. We're going to stop. We're just going to put it to the floor. Especially if you put a trailer on it, I, I just turn and turn, I turn the overdrive off. I don't even drive, and then I drive like 55, maybe 60. Now another thing is you gotta think the speedometer is off about 10%. So if it says 60, it's going normally about 66. So that's basically uh, what I wanted to show the before. And um, I don't want to talk a ton. I know sometimes these videos can get really long when people talk all the time. But um, anyways, I hope that that kind of gives you an idea of what I'm dealing with. Hey guys, so it's been a couple months. You saw the video where I drove the truck up and down the street, how slow it was and everything. A lot of things have happened since then. Um, like I said, that was like two months ago. Uh, 
So today we're finally going to put the gears in. Uh, here's our Yukon Dur Grip. There's part number. It's a 31 spline posi. Uh, this is it. Don't open it in your house, by the way. Make your whole house stink. Poyo bearings, Moda 456 gears. So I'm gonna try to hold this and do this with one hand. But essentially, you put your wrench on there and you hit it with a hammer, you tap on it, boom, 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 boom. And the reason why you do that is to shock it. If you just try to slowly push it, uh, it will break off. So, it's just something I've learned over the years. Doing this kind of stuff. Cross pin bolt out. That's the cross pin. Right there. Slide that out. Sometimes there's a cross pin. Okay. Yeah. Fill all this stuff. This thing is a little more difficult. Slide your axle in. There goes one of your locks right there. Slide in your other axle. There's the other one. It fell out the bottom. Sometimes they fall out, sometimes they don't. Now you're ready to pull your two axles out. So these have cup adjusters. I got the special tool in the shop. Ah. 
show you. We're going to walk these spider gears out. There's one of them. And this is supposed to be spring loaded. That's not supposed to fall out like that at all. That is not supposed to happen. And normally, you can rebuild these. Normally, you can rebuild them. There's a the problem. There's no, even if you put a retainer in there, there's no way to salvage these. So, they're definitely cooked. There's no friction material, it's just metal on metal. And there's the other one. That one's even worse. Look at that. Um, let's see if this can pull this out. Yeah, it's not one to come out. Oh, there it goes. There we go. So, let's uh, pick this up. Dang. I'm trying to tear. Look at that. Pieces. Bearing. This is so hard to do with one hand. There we go. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, this house. Housing is short. So. Here's the grooves I was talking about. So, see those grooves? So, you could put a retainer in there and probably clean this up and maybe make it work, but she's pretty tested. So, that's why we got a new one. So, our next course of action is we're going to take these bolts out. These are reverse thread. Reverse thread. So you'll put your gun tightening to take them off. Take these off, hammer this off. I need this reluctor wheel. This reluctor wheel is for the ABS. It's gonna go on to this one. Um, and then we can bolt on our new gear. And then, uh, and then we'll go back, oh, well, we gotta go back to the truck. I gotta knock the pinion out. So uh, the pinion gear is next. Just some pitting. Not bad. Yeah, not terrible. No first sleep. So we're gonna grab this bearing. We're gonna pull it off. There's a shim right behind it. I don't know. Right behind it. There's a shim. So we're gonna pull that off. This this off and our handy dandy press.
damn it, come on. There we go. a bite to put them both on. Okay, so I didn't really get it on film, but I'll show you what I did. Um, so you gotta slight, take up the slack and this crush sleeve for that. Um, and even though my Ingersoll ran impact is really strong, it just wouldn't do it. So um, I come up with this idea and I'll show you. I use a jack, a two by four and a ratchet in my big pry bar and then uh you jack up the jack and it'll it'll tighten it up so once once you have the lash at zero that means that the crush sleeve has crushed just a little bit that's all you need the rest is really really uh, or is much easier once you get it to initially crush then um then you can put your seal in so that's what we're going to work on we're going to put the seal in first put the flange back on put the new nut on Tighten it up. So.
close. Right there. No cigar yet. Oh, that's perfect. That is perfect. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. That is perfect. Nice. Sweet. There we go. Jeez. They're all tight. Go break that loose, break that loose, break that loose, break that loose. Okay, they should move a little bit, and they do. Okay. It's a uh, adjuster. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> you could run that probably and uh, you probably wouldn't have any issues. We're gonna go probably a half a turn and a half a turn. And then we're gonna tighten the big bolts up. We're gonna do a half a turn here. Not like that. Okay. And then we're gonna go a half a turn on this side. And then you're supposed to torque these. Everyone does them different. Uh, I did, I think 85 on my last See what that does. Do the half and a half. Let's see what that is. That's tight. I like it. All right. Now what we're gonna do is it's really tight right now, but we're gonna torque on this side, and it's gonna push it just ever so slightly over to the right. But that's that's almost too tight um, we'll play with it we'll see put this on here this is how I did the last setup I did and it worked fine That should be very close to that because there's no 
Well, yeah. Okay, so there's that. Now, we're gonna go underneath. That, that's really tight. It's, I mean, it's not. Ow, motherfucker. It's got a metal sliver in the freaking. Like, it's tight, but you know, I just, I know this stuff. I've done this before. Honest. So I'm taking these 65 for beans. Um, so just to prove a point, one hand grab my dial gauge because I know. Some internet people are gonna be. You didn't check the lash? You didn't check the lash? Oh, it's hard to do. Hold a camera and do this with one hand, but I don't know if you could see, but that's about six to seven thousandths, and the spec is between six and ten. So, just figured I would uh, show that. Once you've been doing this a long time, uh, <laughs> you kind of know when it's right. So, anyways, there you go. Uh, ah, crap. So, I'm gonna turn this. I want to tell you this. I get that pinion pretty low. It's set perfectly. It's nice and tight. Go one way, and you go the other way. Okay. Oh, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. I can already tell it's beautiful. Uh, it might be a little. I think you gotta give it some resistance. But I think I like it. Right in the middle, right in the middle, right in the middle, right in the middle, right in the middle. And on the back, right in the middle, 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 middle. Perfect. It. I would like it to be a little deeper. Uh, I think every gear set that I put in, I'm like, man, I wish it was a little deeper, but I think that's perfect. I think that'll be fine.
halfway. Slide the axles in. Okay, so uh, that's the solution I come up with. I've got two clamps, one on that side, one on that side. And I don't know if you can see in there, but it is so freaking close. It's like literally a, a millimeter and it'll slide in. But now that I got the clamps on there, it's a little bit closer than it was before. So, hey guys, all right. So the GoPro died, and then a really bad storm was blowing into town. So uh, I pretty much like scrambled to get everything done. Um, I was trying to get the cover on before the storm blew in because I didn't want a bunch of dirt getting blown into the rear differential. So uh, we got that retainer in, and then. Um, I got the um, the two locks. There's these like little L lock things that lock the rotating um, adjusters. I got those put on, and then uh, I painted the cover and I painted the bolts, and um, it looks really cool. Let me show you real fast. Literally, so that's what it looks like. Um, literally, all I have to do is put fluid in it and uh, take it off the jack stands and I can go drive it. So let's get that done. That is my window unit.